Red Sharks IBC coverage is brought to you by Matrox, Simply, and VizRT. So, what's new for the VizRT group? Hi. Uh, well, we are promoting this Engine 5 here, which we call the Possibility Engine. And it is a major release because there are two major features which qualified for that. One is adaptive graphics and one is our new and revised Unreal Engine integration. So what's adaptive graphics? What does that mean? Adaptive graphics is our approach to solve the problem. We have the best looking graphics uh, regardless of the format or screen size that you're trying to broadcast to. Our customers have been uh, doing this very successfully for linear broadcast and large screens. But uh, it is a lot of work currently with our tools to uh, create all the graphic formats for square video, vertical video, or 16 by 9 uh, for mobile devices. Now with adaptive graphics, we are giving you for the first time the possibility to create one scene and parameterize it uh, according to your needs. And this goes beyond just the formats and aspect ratios. You can also use that for different brandings. So, um just explain to me why this is important for the end customer. What makes it so much easier then? Well, it's a time and cost saving factor on many aspects. The creation itself uh, is already the biggest cost saving that you're introducing. Because I said like before, you needed a single scene for every single output format. Now with adaptive graphics and uh, our Flexbox approach, you can work on a single scene rig the scene for controls, make sure that the content that is important to you gets uh, visible depending on the format that you're using, plus you can QA it directly in one environment. And why is this kind of centralized approach? It might, it might be easy to understand, but like, why is this so important? What, what kind of makes the difference then? Uh, it is important to have an overview of all the formats at the same time to adjust the animations, to adjust the layout for all of them simultaneously instead of going in and out of different scenes and trying to uh, match everything up. Flexbox is uh, a familiar approach from uh, the web development and people are uh, used to the terms and the terminologies that we're using there. So the switchover should be super easy. So we covered the creation of adaptive graphics, but uh, the cost saving and uh, the reduction in errors also continues on the control side of it. You can cascade multiple engines producing for all the different formats being controlled by any of our control applications. Trio uh, is the first one that is aware of adaptive graphics and has the uh, possibility to show you all the different previews, but all the others will follow soon but control is already possible today. So, but you also have adaptive storytelling. Correct, adaptive graphics is an integral part of adaptive storytelling. But you know, when you're looking at uh, graphics, it's hard to define where graphics start, where graphics end. So we just consider every media asset equal in rights. We don't differentiate between video or uh, computer generated graphics clips or images, you know, all of this is super important to tell your story. Now, adaptive graphics solves the problem of uh, adjusting your graphics for the best viewing experience when it comes to reading and understanding the content. Adaptive storytelling involves all the rest of the media. So we have uh, several customers replacing switchers with software-based approaches. And if you are bringing that into the equation together with uh, automation, Adaptive storytelling gives you brand new possibilities on how you can automate that broadcast simultaneously to large screen 16 by 9, small screen 16 by 9, square video and vertical video by making sure that the, the ecosystem understands what is the best possible visualization shot or angle of the cameras or the framing of the content according where it's being used on large screens, square or vertical. Now, uh, you're also already working with Unreal now, right? We've been working uh, with Epic and an Unreal integration since 2017. But since, uh, you know, all render platforms are developing, uh, we are now on our third iteration of the Unreal integration. And this is the most powerful we've done so far. We actually rewritten it from scratch and we're using DirectX 12 
to make sure that uh, the users can utilize all the functionality, the advanced functionality that's available inside the Unreal Engine, like for example, ray tracing. And uh, it also enables us to uh, uh, do Ultra HD productions together with Unreal. The reason why we did Unreal 5 also was that uh, there are two major features that stand out in their release. One is Nanite, which allows you to uh, render very large landscapes uh, without having to optimize it uh, manually prior to bringing it on air and making sure it runs real time. This is something a lot of our customers requested, both from sports, but uh, interestingly enough, also from use, so they can paint a way bigger picture than just a virtual studio. And the second uh, feature that stands out in Unreal 5 is their uh, dynamic lighting. And this is called Lumens. Unreal integration also means the controllability of uh, Unreal. And uh, we read that from scratch as well. So we uh, added functionality, which is similar to our control objects inside this engine, giving you full control over the assets in Unreal directly from our control applications through MSC. So if that wasn't enough, uh, you also have something to tell me about Fizzdown Cloud. Right. I mean, software, IP, and cloud is important for us as a company. And it's also important to make things simpler for our customers. We're bringing out this now, which uh, resolves the uh, tedious tasks of uh, deploying individual uh, nodes into the cloud and connecting them together. So this now makes all of this a breeze. It's click, drag, and drop you enter credentials and uh, you're defining the time at which you want to have your uh, live production available to you. And uh, it will make sure that it gets deployed correctly.